So I've been pretty quiet on Facebook the past few days, and um, yeah, it was. I mean, I heard the news that Robin Williams had committed suicide. I heard the news on Tuesday morning, and uh, yeah, it was. It's been a pretty tough week for me. Uh, but I mean, m- mostly because, well, I mean, I have a full day at uni. I had to get through a full week at university, and you know, and every evening I just had to sit down and give myself some time to just process all these emotions and just to think about the whole thing in general. And um, so, Robin Williams for me was uh, an inspiration. He's been an inspiration for quite a while, ever since I heard that he was apparently also an an introvert. And it it, it makes him pretty odd, I mean, because... You know he's ever so comedy on screen, and um, he you know he loves to entertain other people. So I mean, logically, it would logically it would not be wrong to infer that he you know he might enjoy it around being being other people. So, but that was some years, some number of years ago, and naturally I know better now. Being an introvert has no bearing on your capability to entertain others. So, I mean, at most, you know, provided that this whole factor is true, you know, he could, he, Robin Williams probably just needed some, some time, some time to himself to uh, recharge his mental batteries. Uh, but, I mean, it doesn't take long just to, or I mean, even if you just check his IMDb page, he's done so much. And, um, the movies... Uh, ranging from Good Morning Vietnam, Mrs. Doubtfire, Mrs. Doubtfire, one of my personal favorites, and um, Dead Poet Society, and you know several others. I also remember Patch Adams, although I was way too young at the time when I watched it, so I should definitely rewatch that sometime. And um, and you know it was not just the movies there, uh, and it wasn't just comedy movies as well. Uh, I rem- he apparently. In the movie Insomnia, he also plays a child molester and the ultim- like, the you know the uh, the ultimately the bad guy in that movie. From memory, memory may be rusty. I take no responsibility. And um and it's not just that. There's also uh he's like as a comedian, you know, he's probably done comedy skits and so on, and um guest appearances and such. Uh, for me, the one that stands out was his guest appearance on Who's Lying Is It Anyway. And uh, where he just he just goes really over the top, and um, but he's still you know pretty well delivered, and um, it's actually pretty amazing that he can improvise just as well as all the other people on whose line. Uh, there was a, there's another one that's also worth checking out in my opinion. It's um, it's a it's a video on the Nerdist channel, and it's entitled "The Introvert Dictator." It's um. It's it's part of it's part of a series where they invite comedians to put on a completely um, impromptu skit, where um, you, you, they have, they had a screen next to them that would just flash words like some really random, on some really random topic, and the comedian would have to uh, do some random, like co- co- improvised skit on the spot basically. And uh, wh- one of Robin Williams' topic was the introvert dictator. It's a very short video. I. Uh, if I remember to link it in the blog post, it should be there, and, uh, it's definitely worth checking out, it's less than five minutes, and, um, it's pretty amazing. So, and, um, there was, there was also, uh, another one where he had a guest appearance on Friends with Billy Crystal that was really, (laughs) that was funny as he, uh, he actually put on an accent for that one, and, um, I don't actually, I don't, I, I, I can't tell you what accent it is, but, I mean, I mean, overall, you know, I, there, there isn't anything that, you know, would fail to make me, you know, laugh or chuckle and, you know, just smile. And, I mean, Robin Williams' ability to do that just makes him so memorable. It, it was, it was like, um, I mean, c- certainly, like, his type of comedy, just, it seems original. I, I suppose it's, I mean, I, I suppose it may not be entirely original, but, I mean, just, it's sort of delivery presentation and the whole shebang of it all, and, um, um, I, I guess, I guess he was just someone who stood out, so, you know, it just made him a memorable person in that way, you know, he's someone who stands out in people's minds because of his, his, his flavour, his way of doing things, and, you know, that's the kind of person I like to be as well, like, I, I want to be someone who can make other people laugh, and, 
you know, and to be someone who stands out as well. It's it's kind of ironic because my natural tendency is to, you know, just stay private, you know, not do much and not publicly post my life on Facebook and that sort of thing. But it, yeah, so it's kind of a standing out in a different type of way and not so much like publicly stand out sort of thing. And, um, and my, and in my attempt to emulate Robin Williams, I, some number of years ago, I started working on, you know, just this more outgoing, eccentric personality and, uh, you know, just someone who can crack a choke on the fly, someone who can, someone who sometimes over exaggerates things and, you know, occasionally acts like a drama queen. And, uh, I, I, I don't quite remember when I started working on it, but I do know it's getting better, it's getting more refined. Some of my, well, every now and then, some, every now and then some attempts at a joke, you know, falls flat because, you know, it's, you know, everyone's got to start somewhere and, uh, yeah, so, uh, what else did I write down here? <laughs> And so, I mean, we, and, I mean, I mean, I mean, so, some people may not like Robin Williams type of humor because, you know, it may just seem over the top or it may just seem very eye rolling. Uh, and, um, that's kind of the, that's kind of the, the same type of thing that I get as well. You know, some people, <laughs> maybe my tutorial students, they just look at me, they roll their eyes and think, oh, I've got such a crazy tutor. What, what, why is he flipping out over such a small thing? And, uh, and, um, and, and it's like when I'm teaching my cello students as well, um, got, and they're, they're mostly primary and high school kids. And, you know, sometimes <laughs> I, 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 I actually was teaching one today and, um, but in general, with my childish I like to tune into this childish side of me that, you know, just goes, yay, at the smallest things. And, um, yeah, I mean, a couple of them like it. One likes to roll his eyes, but he still smiles about it in the end because he's like, you know, you know, I'm, I'm someone who just tries to enjoy the small things because, I mean, you know, sometimes music practice can be really boring. So, you know, <laughs> got to be someone who can encourage them to practice a bit more and to recognize the small goals and, you know, achieving them, that kind of thing, and, and basic, and basically this whole thing just, I, I mean, after the, after I heard the news on Tuesday morning, uh, it just made me question this alternative, this, you know, this second personality, and, you know, why, why I was doing it, and, um, you know, because, like, there, there's this thing about people wearing a mask, with regards to the personality and uh, you know, you know, hiding who they are, and I, I, I was faced with that fear of just that I, I was being being that person. You know, I was just wearing wearing a mask when I had to go to uni, when I teach, when I, and things like that. And I was, you know, just worried that, you know, maybe the problems I had weren't weren't actually being dealt with, and you know, I was gonna end up in a similar situation as Robin Williams. And it took me a few days to remember why I started. Or at least my initial thoughts upon developing this, you know, the the more outgoing personality, and uh, it was just more that to sort of just improve, or more more to bring out aspects of my personality that are more desirable, and because uh, because it's like I I still have the same sense of humor. It's just in different contexts and different environments that it may not be expressed as much. And um, it's like in the sense my personality can be a bit environment dependent. It's like, you know, if I'm if, if I'm teaching a tutorial, you know, people are going to listen to me. So I have ample space to sort of just fully express things. Whereas, you know, if I'm having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a close friend, maybe over coffee, and we're talking about deeper topics, then, you know, I'll, I would be, you know, the quieter, more contemplative type of person. And, um... And I'm I'm perfect, you know. To be honest, I'm perfectly comfortable with both of these personalities, and uh, because because you know that's just who I am. And uh, in 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 some ways than others, you know, it's just uh, that 
the environment that just allowed well depending on the environment you know I can express certain facets facets of them so and and you know it was probably the same for Robin Williams I mean uh, you know he gets you know maybe maybe he would just spend a day filming on set he gets to be that guy and then you know he'll go home maybe he will just have some quiet time to himself but I mean with the fact that you was you were suffering from depression, alcohol, alcoholism, and so on, you know, just one would wonder like how different he was upset. And anyway, uh, and yeah, it's just exactly that that may be the hardest thing to fathom, depression, and just how bad he had it, or even depression in general, and uh, it's. I mean, it's like it's like all of us who suffer from depression. We know we mo- most most, if not all of us, know it's all in our hand. But sometimes we have absolutely really bad days that where it's just so crippling, and uh, it's like even as simple as you know you're, you're lying in bed and it hits you, and um, you know it, it, it's just an absolute struggle to get out of bed in the morning. Because you're just feeling so heavy, you just feel like you don't have any energy, and you just feel like, you know, you just want the day to pass very quickly, while, you know, this whole shitty feeling ties over. And, uh, and, yeah, I mean, or, you know, you just want to lie on the couch doing nothing, or, you know, just, even the spoilers tasks, tasks can just seem so utterly difficult exhausting, draining, and and it's like sometimes you just want to curl up in a ball, you know, sit in your room with the lights off and just weep because it feels like you're absolutely not in control of your, your own body and your own feelings. And the hardest part, at least for me, was just understanding that the brain isn't perfect and, um, it, I mean, essentially it just plays tricks on you and uh it's just sort of re- uh trying to recognize these these feelings they're happening why they're happening and um and sort of also trying to co- trying to uh empower yourself just to do small things small and achievable things just to get get every every bit of the energy back and and so some and there there are people who can't do it alone. There are people who are you know who or there are people who with really good friends who are just able just to pull them out. You know, they they'll they'll just ring up and say, hey, you know, want to go shopping, or you know, uh, or it can be even as simple as a stranger talking to me to industry. You know, some people just need someone to talk to, and uh, it's. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> admittedly, is why you know sometimes I like to talk with people in public, even though I'm genuinely terrified to. You know, I'm just hoping that if I can be, you know, a nice guy, wish someone a good day every now and then, you know, and make someone's days better. You know, I mean, I mean, there's re- there's no reason not to do so, and uh, I'm just hoping that maybe I'll be able to do the same for someone, just to say, you know. Saved them from themselves, basically speaking, and um. So I mean, going back to depression is like trying to describe it is pretty, pretty difficult. Well, at least for me, I mean, I, or at least if I was trying to convince someone like myself what it was like, it would be pretty difficult, because um, I guess I'm still sort of stuck in the in the notion that uh, it's. Like it's hard for someone to emphasize unless the, unless they've gone through the experience themselves, and I I, I mean I, I know it's a flawed way of thinking, because there there are like just some things that are just really hard to express, or really hard to get certain people around to understand. So, I mean for me the the most important part is to keep an open mind, and um, yeah, because I mean I I could I could rattle on I could rattle off a bunch of. A bunch of symptoms, or just, and uh, yeah, it that wouldn't really mean much. But nevertheless, there are some, uh, some good expressions on the internet that 
you know, that rings true for a lot of depression sufferers. And uh, the the, fir- the the first one that comes to mind is um, the, the webcomic Hyperbole and a Half hasn't been updated in quite a while. I'm not sure what the author is doing, but uh, what happened was that she wrote a two-part series on depression and um, it's, it's basically made... And, um, well, before that, she was already internet famous, but this even made her even more internet famous because, uh, like, she she's had a very unique way of um, writing and expressing her thoughts through comics drawn in MS Paint that just hit home for a lot of people. Um, the the other one that's worth checking out, uh, I can't give much of a personal recommendation because I haven't tried it myself, but it's a game called Depression Quest. And I, so it's a text-based game that, uh, yeah, well, I mean, there's not much to say about text-based, text, uh, there's not much to say about text-based games, and so it's like just, at at, 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 um, every step you've got a bunch of options, but the, what happens is that some of your options become limited depending on your depression level or current state of mind. I, again, I haven't played the game, but from what I read, it's fairly short, and um, oh, and it's also free, you can find it on Steam, or you can easily Google for it, it's also free on the website as well, and uh, but most importantly, it brings, it hits home for some people as well, so definitely worth checking out if you're not a depression sufferer and you're, you're curious, you want to know more about it, and um, you know, and you're keeping that open mind, maybe you've got a friend who's that you're trying to understand, and um, yeah, I mean, you, I mean, if you're, if you're that kind of person, you're a good person, and uh, I'm, 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 I'm sure your friend or friends appreciate you for it. That um, I re- there was also one other expression I read that um described his depression like this big dog that just uh was just held him held him down at the worst of times, and um, it's. Unfortunately, I don't have the link, but, um, if you remember, yeah, I, unfortunately I don't have a link, but it was a, a very, um, detailed enough account that, like, when, when he got over, when he was trying to get over that depression, it was like, he was trying to teach dog a cup this big dog a couple of tricks to, you know, make him go away, that sort of thing, and some, some of the analogies are really, um, really interesting to read, and... So, I mean, I mean, like, I mean, let's go back to Robin Williams, you know, he's got depression, but what, 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 so if he was having things that badly, one would ask, how do you get on with life, you know, day after day? I mean, it, it's, you, you get it so bad that every morning you just need to spend, spend some extra time in the shower or just staring at yourself in the mirror or just hoping that, or... Maybe you need you just need an, another pick me up, or you need somebody to say that, hey, you know, you're gonna get through this, man. And uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, some people are supported by. I mean, some people are surrounded by supportive friends and families, and um, other people try to focus on other things like their personal goals, ambitions, or what they want to do, and um. And so, sometimes, sometimes you just have to take it a day at a time. And, uh, yeah, I mean, as for my read, as, f- and along with that, there are also just reasons where, I mean, what I mentioned previously may not be completely the reasons where people don't commit suicide, but, um, yeah, I mean, they, they may be completely different, but, um, as f- for my reason, my I it actually comes from when I was reflecting on on uh, an experience I had in high school. So, so I was in year ten, year eleven of high school. You know, like two or three years from graduating, and um, I was sitting in a biology class on a Thursday morning. I'm pretty sure it was a Thursday morning, and uh, yeah, it was your you know your normal morning first first period class waiting in the classroom. Right? waiting for the teacher to walk in, and then the school guidance counsellor walked in. Turns out one of my classmates had committed suicide the night before. She was having a really bad depressive episode, and uh, she had 
rang a helpline to no avail, and after that she went and stood, stood on the train tracks. And you can imagine what happened next. And, um... So, I, I mean, I was part of a music, well, was part of an ensemble, they just played, you know, something at the funeral, but what really struck me at the funeral was that there was just so many people there, and, I mean, well, look, objectively speaking, it was my first funeral, it was the first time that someone close to me had passed away, so maybe, maybe what, maybe what I felt at the time was Amplify or such, but I, I, I still think it's a, an experience to recount on, so, yeah, um, during the funeral service, like, the whole place was just utterly crowded with, um, school students, friends, families, fellow scout members, and, uh, you know, there was me, my ensemble, we, we played a short piece for it, and, um, but, when I was reflecting on this memory, um, some number of years later, it, I sort of realized that there were just so many people that were temporarily disappointed. I I, I suppose I didn't. I, <laughs> temporarily disappointed might not be the right way to say it, but it's, I mean, well, just seeing so many people upset, it was just like, I I I don't want to do this to people. I come. I mean, I can't bear to do this to other people, I don't want to disappoint so many people, and, uh, I mean, it, I mean, to be honest, it's exactly hard to face them, like, that if I passed away, how many people would turn up at my funeral, but there's kind of a morbid thought that, you know, I re- that's really not worth thinking about, <laughs> but, I mean, it, it, it's just that one statement, I do not want to disappoint so many people, and that's, you know, that's pretty much the one thing that, keeps me going whenever, you know, I'm having a really bad session, or, you know, just, um, or I'm having just, um, intrusive thoughts about, or intrusive suicidal ideation thoughts sort of thing, so, yeah, wh- I mean, when, whenever these thoughts have crossed my mind, this, 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 this that's always come back to me, I do not want to destroy others, I want to make other people laugh, you know, I want to make other people smile, and, Generally, I just want people, like, after I interact with people, I just want to leave, you know, be a better person. I want them to be a better person after having interacted with me, so... Yeah, I mean... I mean, look, if I... I mean, like, say, for example, I have a friend in Europe right now, how would she feel being on the other side of the world and sort of generally in a rather inaccessible place at the moment where, yeah, I mean, <laughs> gosh, how, I, I, I couldn't do that to her, and there was also another friend I recently had coffee about, and uh, we, there was also another friend I recently had, had coffee with, and um, we were, you know, able, she, like, she, this, this friend I had coffee with, you know, I'm comfortable with talking about my feelings, and, um, so, and I, I'm, I'm just like, you know, I struggled a couple of times, and, um, I, I, and, you know, if I just went and committed suicide, you know, I just feel like I'd be doing a disservice to her as well, because, you know, she's someone I trust to share these feelings with, and she, you know, she, she also trusts me enough to share her feelings with me, and, um, yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> Gosh, I don't know what to say. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you have a friend like that, you know you do not want to dis- you know you you do not want to disappoint them. At least that's my thought. And um, I and I should mention that this incident with my high school classmate committed suicide that happened some eight or so years ago. So it's. I mean, I mean, you just think about it. I'm still thinking about this eight years later. I'm coming back to it, and I'm reminding myself that, the, you know, I, I don't, I'm just reminding myself that I do not want to disappoint others. Because of that one incident that happened eight or more years ago, and the fact that I'm still thinking about this after after so long, it's just, 
for me, it's testimony to, as to how lasting a memory can be, and uh, and I'm pretty sure the same will go for most of you. Most of you will have at least that one person who will uh, who probably cares about you that much. I hope. <laughs> I I I I don't like I don't I don't like saying I hope. I I usually like to say definitive statements, but. Like generally this time I hope that you know you have at least one person who thinks about you that way and so with that I mean uh, I've been wondering how for I've been wondering how I should round round off this whole thing because I basically I basically have been writing these blog posts over the uh, over, over the past few days and um yeah and but I, I just can't think of a good way to round it off I mean I could and I could I could end up with some generic advice, but I mean I I just feel like they'll be useless because like the people who need it already know it, and uh it it's, it's like if someone told me you know go and see a therapist I'll be sitting there thinking thinking, but not saying you know I I do want to see a therapist but but I, if you could just drag me there I would really appreciate it. And like you know, I'd just be so embarrassed that you know, just wanted to, wanting to seek help for that sort of thing. That you know, it, it would just take someone exceptional to recognize and to also have the energy and gumption to drag me there, so to speak. On other ways to round things off, I could. I do have a side that is that wants to be naive, you know, cheerful, and just say, you know, you know, things are gonna be. Things are gonna get better. What you know? Why don't you take it easy for today? You know, go to bed, take it easy, get get some rest. You know, and wake up tomorrow with a clean slate, that sort of thing. And uh, at first, I thought you know, you know, maybe that would sound a bit cheesy, but that actually didn't sound too bad. So I mean, look, everyone is different. Everyone has different ways for dealing with with it, and um. Aside from making any de- definitive statements, it's um, yeah. I the 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 only the only thing I can really say is to try and find a reason for living. Try and try and find a purpose for life. If you have something you're good at, maybe you want to express yourself, or or even just for your friends or other people. I mean, for me, you know, I just don't want to disappoint other people. That what. That what that's what keeps my head up in you know these hard times, and that's enough for me. And um, I'm not I'm not saying I'm not saying you should try and take that on as a reason because it's finding something like this is something that every individual should figure out on their own. And uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm staying alive. I like to keep going. Because, I mean, I, I can't make other people laugh, smile, you know, do, I, I can't do crazy things, or I, I, I can't be the eccentric person if I'm dead, right? So, yeah, with that, hopefully, yeah, hopefully uh, this rambling off for 30 minutes have has, has meant something, and, um, yeah, uh, I guess that will do it.